The Lord be with you. Am I on? No, I'm not. Let me just check here. I am now. Thank you, Turner. I am now. Try it again. The Lord be with you. Good morning, one and all. Very warm welcome to our service of Holy Eucharist with Baptism on this the final Sunday in the church calendar, which we know as the Reign of Christ. So this is a Sunday on which we celebrate and give thanks for Christ's reign uh, over the cosmos and for all eternity. And it's a particularly good Sunday on which to welcome both Michael Hobbins. Where's Michael? Michael's all the way back there. Michael Hobbins and Frederick Liu uh, through the waters of baptism into the life of God and the church. We're just delighted with and for you both, and it's a privilege to be celebrating that with you. Jasmine, uh, Michael's friend, is going to be uh, reaffirming her vows at the same time. So, Jasmine, we celebrate your public commitment and declaration to following Christ in our presence as well. God bless you all. Uh, for those who don't know who we are, um, we are a community of compassion and hope who simply seek to share God's loving transformation of our lives with our neighborhood and beyond. And we welcome you here this morning and invite you to join in God's mission and ministry through us. We do value hospitality, and uh, so there's plenty of food laid on after the service. If you've got time to stick around, we'd love to say hi. Uh, for those who are not so familiar, thank you very much, Rena. Everything you need to know for this morning's service is in this order of service. And all you need to know is that your responses are the ones in bold type. Okay, I'll do my best just to remind you what page number we're on as we go through the service. Thank you, Rena. So for those who wish, we're going to join now in our territorial acknowledgement, which you'll find printed on the front page of your service bulletin. We acknowledge that we gather today on the lands occupied by the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe nations at the time of the creation of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We honour and respect these nations and commit ourselves to walk together gently upon this land. Now, you will have come this morning from all sorts of situations, you, all sorts of burdens you may well be carrying. So I'd like to invite folk, before we get underway, just to bring whatever you've brought to the service this morning um, and lay it with God. God is a God who longs to embrace us, to comfort us, strengthen us, and bless us with God's peace. So I invite you now just to lay down whatever you're carrying as we come before our Lord in worship and to come before the throne of grace with confidence that God will bless you with what you most need.
Well, once again, the warmest of welcomes to our service of Holy Eucharist with baptism on this feast of the reign of Christ. Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. As we remain standing, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Standing, we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well beloved Son, our Lord and King, grant that the peoples of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Find you pleased to be seated as we listen attentively to God's Word proclaimed. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land 
and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the nations with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? Or when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothes. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Well, today is a day to celebrate. Today we are celebrating the reign of Christ, this last Sunday in the church year before we begin again an Advent next week. And today, of course, we are celebrating the baptisms of Michael and Frederick and the renewal of baptismal vows by Jasmine. I have had the great pleasure of doing preparation with all of them, and it has been nothing but a joy. During our preparation, we looked at many of the meanings and symbolism of baptism, like new life and rebirth, being washed clean, moving from slavery into freedom, being filled with the Holy Spirit, 
being welcomed into the family of God and being buried with Christ and raised in his resurrection. And we also focus very much on the baptismal vows. Now, these are the promises we make or that someone made for us if we were an infant when we were baptized. And then we seek to live into these vows for the rest of our lives. First, and we will all be doing this, first we will state our belief in the triune God. And then we promise, with God's help, to continue to grow as God's people through word and sacrament, to turn from evil, and to share God's good news, to serve all people in love, to strive for justice and peace, and to safeguard the earth. These vows, as I, as I pondered them week on week, they started to remind me of the oath of allegiance that officials take here in Canada, or the oath of citizenship for those who want to become Canadian citizens. Here in Canada and also in the UK, and from my own country, um, the United States, the Pledge of Allegiance. Right? These oaths are verbal expressions of a choice to commit oneself to a cause that the leader represents. In the case of Canada and the UK, that's the king. And in the case of the United States, it's a flag that represents an ideal. So the British version of these oaths of allegiance date back to before the Magna Carta. But this idea of pledging allegiance to a leader that represents a way of being, a way of life, is much, much older. In the Old Testament, Abraham uh, commits himself to follow God. And Moses and Joshua invite the Hebrew people several times to commit and recommit themselves to the Lord God's ways. Instead of being distracted by the ways offered by the gods or the leaders of the people groups around them. So this is why it's so appropriate for Michael and Frederick and Jasmine to be committing and recommitting themselves to Christ today, because this is the day where we all consider what Christ's leadership means and represents in our lives and in the world. And our readings today reveal so much about this. In Ezekiel, God is the leader as a shepherd, a shepherd who is rescuing his scattered flock. He brings them into good pastures and into waterways where they can lie down and rest and feed. His flock, Ezekiel says, is made up of the lost, the strayed, the injured, and the weak. Those who've been battered and bullied and bruised by the selfish who take more than their share. It's these sheep in need who make up God's flock, and God is their shepherd who will feed and heal and lead them. And then in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus echoes this Ezekiel passage. But this time, it's clear that Jesus is the shepherd. And this time, he goes into more detail about what these sheep, his followers, look like. And I found it so interesting to discover that the sheep Jesus describes are the ones who look like the shepherd in Ezekiel. These sheep are the ones providing for the hungry and the thirsty, tending to the naked and the sick, caring for the stranger and the imprisoned. And my favorite part about this passage is that they do it all without even realizing they're doing it. Like, when did, when did we do all of this? They act this way because it's what their leader does. It's who they've pledged themselves to, and over time, by following their leader, they, it's just who they've become. The thoughtless and the selfish, on the other hand, have given their lives over to different values than Christ's. And sadly, one's not uncommon still in the world today, right? Looking out for number one, might makes right, or the one who dies with the most toys wins. Those did not help the, the, the ones in need because it never occurred to them that they would need to. They unrepentantly upheld different values that shaped who they ultimately became and how they lived their lives. So it might sound like becoming a sheep who looks like Jesus 
is way too high a goal for all of us. And well, you're right, it is. It's something we cannot accomplish on our own. And fortunately, here's where the letter to the Ephesians comes in. Paul describes how God puts Jesus, our shepherd and leader, far above all other powers, leaders, and authorities. This, mean that, this means that our leader will not have to fight or struggle to maintain his leadership. Christ's ways are in a completely different category than any human's. And Christ's leadership is even beyond earthly or even cosmic, right? It's eternal and divine. Resurrection is the power that Christ has. That's not just staving off death, that is overcoming death, answering death with new life. This leader will ultimately not fail, cannot fail. And it's this power that our leader uses to help us live out this life that we commit ourselves to when we follow him. So those little words, in our baptismal um, vows, with God's help, that's not superfluous, that's essential, right? We need God's help. And it is by and through this Christ's power that we are ultimately transformed. It doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen through God's grace over time as we commit and recommit ourselves to following this leader. So, as Michael and Frederick make their baptismal vows, and as we all share in renewing ours with Jasmine, let us all remember who we are vowing to follow, what kind of life that entails, and who will empower us to live it. Let us all trust in the one who will bring it all to pass, our leader and our shepherd, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. going to invite uh, Frederick and Michael and Jasmine to come and join me up here at the uh, crossing. Roseanne is uh, our parish sponsor for Frederick and John Watts is sponsoring uh, both Michael and Jasmine. So thank you both very much for fulfilling this role. Okay, so I'm now going to invite the sponsors to present their candidates for baptism. I present Michael Jeffrey Walter to receive the sacrament of baptism. Thank you, John. And Roseanne? I present Friedrich Tianyu to receive the sacrament of baptism. Michael, do you desire to be baptized? I do. And Friedrich, do you desire to be baptized? I do. So I'm going to ask you three questions. Uh, we call them renunciations, things that you're turning away from. So Michael and Friedrich, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. And do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. So we now come to three affirmations, and these are three questions to which you are saying yes. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. And do you promise to obey him 
as your Lord. I do. John is now going to present Jasmine. I present Jasmine Marie, who desires to reaffirm her baptismal vows. Now, a question for all of you. Uh, the answer, as you say, see, is we will. And I want to make sure that our candidates hear our endorsement. Okay? Friends, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. Sister Heather is now going to lead us in prayer. World, particularly for those parts of the world where there's a war, for the Ukraine, Sub-Saharan Africa, for Israel and Gaza, giving thanks for the ceasefire in the land of the Holy One, pray that it may continue and lead to a lasting peace. We pray for all of those named in the Chronicle and for those whom we hold in our hearts, for Barb and her family. We pray in particular this Sunday for the church as it keeps the feast of the reign of Christ. We pray for the leaders of the church as they guide us in that mission. We give thanks and pray particularly for this cathedral on our feast of naming and for all other cathedrals, churches, colleges, and schools who are dedicated to Christ's church, the reign of Christ, Christ College. And we pray in particular for Michael, Friedrich, and Jasmine who take this next step in their Christian journey. Let us now pray for Michael and Friedrich who are to receive the sacrament of new birth and for Jasmine who renews that sacrament. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you now please to stand as we sing from the waters of creation.
So if you haven't turned in your chairs, I invite you to do that now as our focus moves to the font. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led your children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as Messiah the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Saviour. To him, to you and to the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now join with Michael and Friedrich who are committing themselves to Christ and with Jasmine Marie as she renews her baptismal covenant. Friends, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and was Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. And will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. And will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of of the earth. Michael, we'll put this down, we'll throw this down here for you. Good. So I'm just going to invite you to bow your head over the font. Michael Jeffrey Walter, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just as well, we brought some towels along, Michael, huh? Quite the head there. I'll leave you to finish off. Michael, I now sign you in this, with the sign of the cross to show that you are marked as Christ's own forever. Friedrich. I'm just going to invite you to bow your hand. Friedrich Tianyu, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll leave you to finish off as well. 
And Friedrich, I sign you now with the sign of the cross to show that you are marked as Christ's own forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon these your servants the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. And together, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us now welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the house of old God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. And we're now going to pray for Jasmine Marie who this morning has renewed her commitment to Christ. Jasmine, may the Holy Spirit, who has begun a good work in you, direct and uphold you in the service of Christ and his kingdom. Amen. Amen. So, Reverend Monica, I think we have uh, Bibles to present, along with certificates, so we're going to do that right now. And this would be the point at which I'd normally carry infant candidates in my arms <laughs> down the centre aisle. Sorry guys, not happening today. But you can all come for a walk with me as we welcome you into your new family. To crown all things, he must be loved, to bind all together and complete the whole. Friends, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As best we can, we exchange the peace of Christ with one another.
Standing, we pray. Eternal God, by your grace you have raised us up and enthroned us with Christ in the heavenly realms. Receive all we offer you this day and lead us in those good works for which you have created us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, you exalted him as Lord of all creation, that he might present to you an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. Therefore, at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow as heaven and earth proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Just a reminder that the Anglican Communion Table is open to baptized believers of whichever denomination. We uh, welcome you to receive the sacrament this morning. Uh, if you don't wish to receive, please feel free to come forward anyway. We simply ask that you cross your arms over your chest so that we know to give you a blessing uh, rather than the sacrament. There'll be two stations for communion, one a kneeling station up here at the high altar and a standing station uh, on your right uh, in front of the side altar.
invite you please to stand as you are able. As we pray, Almighty God, you have made us a royal priesthood in the kingdom of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Make known his victory through us. We pray that all the world may see his light. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite you please to be seated briefly for some announcements. Again, Michael, uh, Friedrich and Jasmine, just a delight to uh, celebrate with you this morning. And a special... Is that me? don't know where that's coming from. Turner, can we... Uh, we've got some feedback up here. I will just keep talking because you're not going to be able to hear me without a, without a microphone. Um, sorry about that. We'll keep the announcements brief this morning. I uh, just want to say that friends, family of Michael and uh, uh, Friedrich and Jasmine, we gather for refreshments after the service. We'd love to have you stay. Uh, we do actually have an assistive hearing system that's in place. Uh, thank you. That's a lot better. Uh, that's why we've got grey tape all over the place. And uh, we've got the devices. And I'm hoping, where's Wendy Newman? Next Sunday, we may be live with the new assistive hearing system, okay? So uh, for those that may need to access that, next Sunday is the Sunday. A couple of opportunities for sharing uh, in your uh, chronicle, the uh, list of events. Um, Bishop Susan is conducting a diocesan food security appeal for... Giving Tuesday, uh, uh, an anonymous donor has offered $10,000 and is willing to match up to 10000 our donations. So uh, that would be for sec food security, all the various initiatives across the diocese, food banks and others that are supporting those who are food insecure. And you'll see as well, uh, there's a, a note in there about supporting Louise, PWRDF, and we're hoping as a diocese to purchase 30 farms. Is that right? during Advent, so uh, yeah, thank you for that. So this afternoon, uh, we have the, uh, the second in our series of Cathedral Oasis. We're keeping the doors open after coffee hour for any who want to come in and just enjoy this space. So that's happening this afternoon. Uh, a World AIDS Day vigil on Friday here in the nave at 6.30 p.m. And did I see Suzanne here this morning, Suzanne Prue? Maybe not. Uh, anyway, she is offering an Advent quiet day on Saturday, December the 9th. Anything else that we needed to signal? I did want to say on your behalf, thank you very much to the Reverend Monica Green uh, for your sermon this morning. Uh, for those who don't know, Reverend Monica Green is a cur an assistant curate here. She's learning the trade. And uh, uh, not that there's much for her to learn, as you probably heard this morning. Uh, she is particularly gifted. What I do invite is if you've got any feedback, this is the way in which we help form uh, Reverend Monica as a priest. So uh, please, if you've got any feedback on uh, her sermon this morning, uh, feel free to offer that at the door. Anything else that we need to signal? I invite you now please to stand then as you are able. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love and care for this day and forever. Amen.
go forth in the name of Christ.